morning, Anne Marie. Hey, Sis Dina. Good morning. God bless you. Hey, Jerry Ann. Love you, sweetheart. Hey, Rochelle. Good morning. Hey, Tangia. Good morning. Good morning. All right, you all are jumping on here real quick. Praise God. That is awesome. As you beautiful ladies are coming on, do me a favor and click share. Hey, Sister Cheryl, good morning, good morning. As you're coming on, please click share. Let others know that, um, that we are live this morning. Hey, Auntie Cassie. Hey, Delilah, good morning. Hey, Sister Lisa, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Sister Lucy. Hey, Ella. Hey, Christine. Good morning. Hey, Regina. Good morning. Hey, Denise. Good morning. Hey, Sister Karen. Good morning. Hey, Karen, good morning. This is a short song, but I'm going to play it again. It's beautiful. It's called Holy Spirit by, I think her name is Deleon or Deleon. It's so beautiful. Hey, Sister Irene, good morning, beloved. Worship with me for a little bit. Let your presence now fill this place. Holy Spirit. Don't forget to like this video and click share. Let others know that God is about to speak. And we want to hear what He has to say as we just worship this morning. Hallelujah. that we're in this morning, our lives, our lives, awesome ruler, yes, hey Regina, let your presence now fill this place. That's what we desire this morning. Just fill, fill this place with your presence. Let your presence now fill this place. Let mm. your presence now. Yes, yes, Anne Marie. That's my prayer as well. Hallelujah.
be still. That's for somebody this morning. You need to just be still and know. Good morning, Priscilla. That is so short. I'm going to play it again because somebody needs to get that in your spirit this morning. Hey, Veronica. Hey, Janet, good morning. Hey, Coro, good morning. that in the name of Jesus. Some of us are anxious. Some of us are, are worried. God says, be still. Be assured. Be confident that he is God all by himself. He's God. He's powerful. to still our minds this morning. Some of us have got some stuff going on, God. We have some things that have us on edge. We have some things that have us concerned. Some of us are losing sleep. Some of us are trying to pray and don't even have the right words to pray. Uh, some of us are just uh, we're in our feelings and we're, we're letting our thoughts run away with us, God, and, and but we just want to be still. And we want to know in the deepest part of our knower, in the in our deep in our souls. Um we just we just want to be still before you because we have questions that need answers. Uh, we have decisions we need to make and we need guidance and we need wisdom. Um some of us need you to just um, change some of the way that we see things, uh, the way we interact in certain relationships, um, how we make decisions. Help us to be responders and not reactors. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help us to be still this morning and help the word that you're going to bring forth to resonate with us in a powerful way. Help it when help us it when this live is over, uh, that we walk away empowered and emboldened, and not receiving lies, not giving up our peace and our joy, but instead we'll guard it. So Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Speak like never before, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Her name is uh, it's either pronounced Deleon or Delion, D E L E O N, Sister Lucy. Um, and um, it is a beautiful but uh, very it's simple but very very powerful to be still and know. 
and just saying that Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Her songs are just very simple, um, but very, very profound. So listen, um, real quick, just a reminder about Faith Builders tonight. We have several of you that who have signed up to be in the Zoom room with us. Remember, you don't have to be in the Zoom room because we're going to go live, Facebook Live, so you can always watch us that way. But being in the room means that you have an opportunity to interact with us and also with our guest speaker. Um, there may be an opportunity for you to share your testimony or um, you know, ask a question or what have you. So um, being in the room, if that's what you want to do, um, then I need you to register um, because, um, because it's going to be on Zoom, you can't just um, join the Zoom at the time of the event. You would have had to have received a link from us. So with that being said, um, you have to register. So let me share the link with you real quick. I'm going to put it in the chat and um, just click on it and register. It only takes you probably 30 seconds to register. And then you'll get an email um, that includes the link for the Zoom. So I just put it in the chat and hopefully you can see it. And now I am ready to jump into the word that God has for us today. Anybody like me? Are you ready? 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 All right. So, um, yeah, let me get my scripture. The scripture. Um, amen, Sister Denise. Hey, Cassandra. Good morning. Good morning. 2 Corinthians 10, uh, chapter 10, verses 3 to 5. And uh, Sister Denise, who's on here, she's going to be with us tonight. And Denise has a powerful faith testimony herself. But she's also somebody who's been walking with Willie and I for the last number of years. And so, um, you know, what she's going to share is going to bless your soul. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 5. Thanks for putting that up there, Sister Jerry Ann. All right, Sister Lucy, I see you're ready. Praise the Lord. Hear the word of God. It says, for though we live as human beings, we do not wage war according to human standards. For the weapons of our warfare are not human weapons. Some of you know other translations, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That, that just means that, that how we fight, even though we are human, we are not to fight as humans fight. But our weapons are made powerful by God for tearing down strongholds. Somebody say strongholds. For tearing down strongholds. We tear down arguments and every arrogant obstacle that is raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to make it obey. This is good stuff here, y'all, because a lot of us fall into the trap of believing. I've always said to you all <coughs> that th thoughts are like... Um, the analogy I used, it's like a bird circling over your head, right? That you may be walking along and a bird may just choose you. You know, you might be, um, you might be, you know, smelling good, looking good, beautiful to this bird. And this bird just decides it just wants to follow you. And, the, and that bird has every right. It's, you know, you don't own the airspace. And so that bird can just follow you and he can circle you and he can be all around here. But... If that bird decides that he wants to build a nest in your head, you certainly can stop that. You can prevent that. You, 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 you. And that's what thoughts are like. That, yeah, there are thoughts that swirl around in our heads. You know, if you're like me, sometimes a thought just kind of hit me. And I'm like, ooh, where did that come from? 
you know, or something happens and triggers a thought of a situation from my past or triggers a feeling. I know I'm talking to somebody this morning. And so, like that bird, you know, sometimes you, you, you just you don't even see it coming, but, but it shows up and, and it can circle and it can circle. But the, the thing about that thought is it, it may come into your mind, but you don't have to entertain it. It may come into your mind, but you don't have to open your mouth and speak from it. It can come into your mind, but you don't need to grab it and, and, and have it be your truth. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Because the, the, the words that uh, the scripture says, every arrogant obstacle. When I think about arrogant obstacle, and I think about arrogance, when I think about pride, I think about the devil. That he had got so prideful and puffed up, he wanted to be like God. In fact, he thought he was God. And then even when he got kicked out, you know, he... he he had him a little army, so he thought he was all that. So he was arrogant. So anything that comes at us with an arrogance is definitely coming from him. Arrogant obstacle. Any arrogant obstacle that is raised up against the knowledge of God, of who God is. Do you know who God is? Because when the thoughts come in that want you to doubt God, when the thoughts come in, uh, that wants you to um, to um, operate an ego. You know what ego is? E-G-O, edging God out. Help me, Holy Ghost. Right? Anything that causes you to want to edge God out and operate an ego. Um, arrogant means prideful, Daniela. Anything that causes you to want to do God's job or tell God, I, I got this. Yeah, I don't, I don't need you. Oh, this is the way I want to see it happen. This is the way I'm going to make it happen. Yeah, all of that is arrogance. It's pride. And so whenever you are, uh, you and I are operating in that, then um, that's definitely not from God. I'm going to read that same scripture in another translation, the Living Bible. This translation says, it is true that I am an ordinary, weak human being. And I can say amen to that alone. <laughs> that I am definitely an ordinary and weak human being in and of myself. You understand? I'm not saying because we all know Philippians 4.13 that through Christ, what we are strong and we can do anything through him, but through ourselves, we are weak human beings and I don't mean just weak in strength but I'm talking about you know weak in discipline you know some of us just can't can't keep our mouth shut you know some of us start stuff and just can't finish it and 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 I'm saying these are the things that we are weak within ourselves right um but you know with God we're able to accomplish it but we are ordinary weak human beings it's true that I'm a an ordinary weak human being, but I don't use human plans and methods to win my battles. Come on, somebody. But I don't use human plans and methods to win my battles. See, the way that you're going to win that spouse to the Lord, the way that you're going to win your son, your daughter to the Lord, the way that you're going to be able to forgive and release that individual, the way that you're going to, uh, you know, be able to have a sense of feeling like what you've done pleases God. Yeah, the, the way that you're going to do that is not going to be by using uh, human plans or human methods to win the battles. Verse 4, I use God's mighty weapons, not those made by men. Come on, somebody, to knock down the devil's stronghold. This is so good. These weapons can break down every proud argument. And again, we can substitute the word arrogant. But every proud, every arrogant argument against God and every wall that can be built to keep men from finding him. Oh, that is so good. These weapons, I'm going to say that again. These weapons can break down Every proud argument 
against God and every wall that can keep that can be built to keep men from finding him. In other words, strongholds, when they are built, those proud arguments, help me, Holy Ghost, um, it, it, it keeps people from getting to know who God is. That's why we have to be careful that we're not operating in a stronghold because sometimes the very thing that we are praying and we want to see God move in a person's life, that if we're operating in the stronghold and if we don't break down that wall, then the same people that we are praying for them to get to know God can't know God, won't find God because of the stronghold that's in operation. I pray somebody get that this morning. These weapons that are God's weapons can break down every proud argument and every wall that can be built up to keep men from finding him. And with these weapons, I can capture rebels. <laughs> somebody say, I capture rebels. Come on, somebody. And with these weapons, the weapons that are God weapons, not our weapons, I can capture rebels and bring them back to God and change them into men whose heart's desire is obedience to Christ. See, not with our weapons. See, there's a, the scripture tells us that there is a way that seems right unto man. <laughs> right? Right? You, there's a way that we think is right. And, and the way that we're doing it is actually keeping people from knowing God. But when we do it his way, somebody say his way, we, then we're able to capture rebels, people who don't want to hear nothing about God. People who think, I, I'm the boss of me. I don't need, I don't need no Jesus. I don't need, yeah, those people, the same people you're praying for, the same people that you're praying for God to reach them, that God can show you how, God can give you the weapons. He can show you how to engage the fight. Help me, God. In such a way that you can help bring them to him. And their hearts will be changed. This is so powerful. This morning I just want to talk from the topic. From the topic, pull it down. Somebody say, pull it down. Pull it down. Pull it down. See, this, why is this topic important? Because... Number one, we all have strongholds. And number two, we also have the power and the ability through God Almighty to pull it down. We don't, we don't excuses like at this point we've run out if you've been walking with God if you've been in having a prayer life if you've been you know spending time in devotion if you've been here with us on Facebook live encouragement in prayer we have run out of excuses we have heard enough scriptures and enough teaching to help us understand that there comes a time that we truly need to walk in the power given to us by God and we we have to ditch the excuses. Well, oh, that's just the way I am. And that's the way I always be. And well, before I know it, I didn't said something. No, beloved, we have the ability to pull down the strongholds. We have the ability to fight with the weapons that God has given us. It's time to set down our weapons, our weapons of manipulation, our weapons of control, our weapons of trying to do it our way, our weapons of wanting people to fit, you know, side with us. Our weapons are wanting to be the right all the time. Our weapons, it's time to put them down. So what's the stronghold? Basically anything that has a strong hold on our mind. Can we continue to get real this morning? Anything that has a strong hold on our mind. Anything that prevents us from knowing and believing the truth. In other words, strongholds are built on lies. 
Strongholds can be built on our feelings, our emotions. We can even build up strongholds on our past and our experience, but it is not built on the truth. And that's what scares me sometimes when I log on to people's live and, and people's podcasts and what, YouTube's and stuff, and, and I see and I see the, the title, you know, speaking my truth. Listen, um, I can appreciate that we want to speak our truth, but if our truth doesn't line up with the truth, somebody say the truth. And the truth is Jesus. The truth is the word of God. If our truth does not align with that truth, then what's happening is our our quote unquote truth that that is uh, that is steeped in lies, uh, that's steeped in pain, that's steeped in hurt, that's steeped in unforgiveness, will now go out into the atmosphere and it will cause other people to not be free. Because the Bible tells us that when we know the truth, that it is the truth that sets us free. So what does that mean? That if we're speaking anything other than the truth, that we are potentially causing other people to be bound. A stronghold is anything that keeps us from knowing and believing and even speaking the truth. And we all have strongholds. And it is my prayer uh, that the Holy Spirit will help me to just share some strongholds with you this morning. That if, if, if you operating in any of them, that you will identify them and you will do what? Pull it down. And this is not that we're not, I'm not here to help you identify them so you can be like, oh, well, yeah, I need to go to counseling about it or I, or I need to pray about it. No, the minute you recognize a stronghold this morning, the Bible tells us that you and I have the power. Somebody say power. I've got the power. We have the power through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit living in us, that when we hear it, when the Holy Spirit reveals, when the Holy Spirit taps me and say, and that's you right there, that we immediately repent, say, God, forgive me. I didn't even realize I was operating in that. I didn't even realize that because I'm operating in that, that I may be a barrier to somebody else. Uh, and I have not been able to rope in those rebels like that scripture talked about because I've been being a rebel myself because I've been allowing these lies to, got to, to, to push me and to motivate me. But today we are going to acknowledge, we are going to recognize our, our strongholds and we are going to respond accordingly. So does a stronghold have a stronghold on you? That's my question this morning. So here is the potential of having a stronghold of guilt. If you are a person that says stuff like, God could never forgive me. That's a stronghold of guilt. And I've got news for you, baby girl. I've got news for you, brother man, that Jesus didn't come and die on the cross for no reason. He came and died on the cross for, for the forgiveness of your sins. Listen, not just the sins that you did last year and 10 years ago and yesterday and even today, but your sins of tomorrow. Come on, I need somebody to get that in your spirit this morning. That before you even you even uh, perform this sin, that Jesus' blood has already flowed for it. So what that means is that we have the, the beautiful gift of repentance, that you don't have to sit in the stronghold of guilt about what you did. You stop putting yourself in your own personal prison of guilt. You need to be released today in the name of Jesus. If you think that you got more power than the blood of Jesus, that is a stronghold a stronghold of guilt and I pray right now in the name of Jesus that if any of you are operating under that guilt and that self-condemnation that you recognize it is a stronghold and you decree and you de uh, declare today that that stronghold will no longer have a stronghold on you another stronghold y'all come on is the stronghold of resentment uh, how, what does that look like if you say things like, I could never forgive that person? Really? 
Did God forgive you? Does God forgive you? Right? Isn't it beautiful that when we mess up, that we can go to God and we can ask him to forgive us and have the assurance that he's going to forgive us? And he does that so that we can what? Turn around and, and be able to extend that same forgiveness to others. In fact, scripture tells us that if we don't forgive others, God's not going to forgive us. That's crazy that we would think that God will forgive us and we're not extending the same forgiveness. That's a stronghold. Anytime you hear yourself using those words like never and can't, that's a stronghold. And we need to bust that wall down today. We need to break it down. Yes, you can forgive them, but understand, and this is the problem, sometimes we don't, you know, we don't want to forgive people, we don't want to release the resentment because of our misunderstanding of what forgiveness looks like. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you give them a pass. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you condone their behavior. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you don't acknowledge that what they did was wrong. It doesn't mean any of that. In the nutshell, forgiveness means that you have unshackled yourself. Help me, help me, Holy Ghost, to help, help, help these people understand. Listen, that because for unforgiveness shackles you. It puts a, a like an invisible, a spiritual shackle on you and on the person that you refuse to release and to forgive. And so when you choose to forgive, you choose to let go of the resentment and you are basically unshackling yourself from that individual, from the pain of what they did, from that experience. That is what forgiveness is. And then it doesn't mean that you're going to hang out with them anymore. It doesn't even mean that you're going to trust them anymore. It just means that you have acknowledged that this situation has been toxic. You have acknowledged that you have been stuck long enough. You have acknowledged that it's time to move forward. And you have acknowledged that you have taken them, listen, from being under your thumb to now being in the hands of God. I'm going to say that again because some of us, we think that if we keep them under our thumb, you know, every time they see us, they know we got a problem with them. Every time they see us, you know, your nose all turned up. Every time they see you, they just know that they on your bad side. That's you trying to keep them under your thumb. But let's release them from that and let's put them in the hands of God. Strongholds of resentment, unforgiveness. Here is another stronghold, y'all. Come on. Yeah, and I, I need y'all to say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. This is not a time of condemnation. It's a time of revelation. That if the Holy Spirit reveals something to you, then say, okay, yep, that's definitely me. And I, 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 I release, I cast down this stronghold today. Another stronghold is the stronghold of rejection. I'm, I'm coming down somebody's lane this morning. You know, what does the stronghold of rejection sound like? Well, um, I don't deserve to be loved like that. You know, after everything I did, I, you know, I don't really deserve for a person to care for me like that. Um, you know, nobody will ever really love me. I'm not really lovable. Oh, all that stuff that I have, it, you know, in my past, you know, yeah, I can't nobody really connect with that. You know, I've done too much. I... I've the, uh, you know, uh, that, come on, you, you understand? all of that right there is a spirit of rejection. Oh, well, maybe if I just, you know, I, I'm not really being myself, but, but if I can at least just do what they want me to do or be who they want me to be, then, then maybe they'll accept me, you know, stronghold of rejection, y'all stronghold of rejection. And oftentimes, that's it. That's why we have the soul ties, breaking unhealthy soul ties workshop. Because oftentimes, that stronghold of rejection was, was attached to you. I'm even going to say was assigned to you by the enemy from, from mo most 9 out of 10 from when we were little. That, that it, it, it started with a, a parent, a mom or a dad or, or you know, whoever was our caretaker. And, and what they did was cause us to feel like there was something wrong with us. That I could never do anything right. I, I get all A's, but when I get one B, you're all over me because of that B. You, you feel like... Like, like there's nothing you could do to to ever be enough. You you no matter who you are, people people won't love you for if they really see who you really are. See, all of that 
is the stronghold of rejection. And if that is you this morning, I need you to I need you to understand that if that seed was planted when you were younger, that you will do nothing but take that seed and take it into every relationship that you go into. And you literally will, will potentially be attracted to people who are going to solidify that spirit of rejection. I don't have time to get into that teaching this morning. But are y'all hearing what I'm saying this morning? If that is you and you and you did it, we're going to break off that, that stronghold of rejection off of you this morning. Another stronghold is a stronghold of defeat. Whew, I never win. It's always bad for me. Mm-hmm. Man, I can never, I just can't overcome this. I can't get, that is a stronghold of defeat. And you need to recognize that. And you need to tear that thing down in the name of Jesus. I will never. Come on now. Another stronghold. This, this, this is good. The stronghold of performance. <laughs> what does that sound like? Well, I've got to be good, otherwise God's going to reject me. Or well, I've got to do this. Um, I've I got to do it, and i got to do it really, really well. Some of us have mastered perfectionism, but, there, it, but that's a lie. You understand? You see, it's, it's not possible for us to be perfect. But a lot of us, some of us are, are not a lot of us, but some of us on here, you are striving. You're striving, and you're trying to do, 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 and God just wants you to be. I need to say that again. You you are you're operating and do 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 that. If I just do this, if I just do that, if I just do that, then 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 I'll be acceptable. You know, if, if I just do that, if if I just if I just get the highest score, if I just you know that that's performance. And and listen and praise God that there is nothing in the gospels, nothing in the scriptures that tells us that God wants us to perform our way into his love. The beautiful thing about the love of God is it tells us that there ain't nothing we can do about it. That we can't do anything to make him love us more. We can't do anything to make him love us less. That he just loves us. That we there's nothing we can perform. There's nothing that we can do. There's nothing we can ace. There's nothing that we can that will cause God to love us anymore. That is a stronghold of performance. That that maybe when you were growing up, you felt that it that you were loved or appreciated for the things that you did. And so now you are a high performer. You are a high achiever. You feel like your value is in everything that you do. But can I tell you this morning that your value is not in what you do. That your value is in who you are. And who are you? You are the daughter. You are the son of the most high king. And that is where your value comes from. Not what you do. God don't need you to do nothing. He is the doer. God is the one that has the power. He is the one, not us. Everything that needs to be did or do is already done. Jesus already did it. It's done. It is finished. Now we just walk in it. Some of us listen. We are operating under the stronghold of appearance. If I just look a certain way, if I just act a certain way, concerned about how other people perceive us, image. Can't go nowhere on your, unless your hair is just right, unless your makeup is on point. Unless you got on the nicest outfit. Come on, I'm talking to somebody this morning. This is why I love my encouragement and prayer family. Listen, I'm just going to be real with you all for a second. What time is it? When I first started this, um, this time with you all, I remember one of the things that I struggled with was I would want to wake up in the morning and I'd want to wake up and I'd want to work out and I also would want to come and spend time with you all. Well, when I work out, my hair is all all wet and sweaty, and 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 so uh, appearance wise, I didn't feel acceptable to come before you all on camera in the morning, 
And so if some of y'all remember, y'all rolling with me back in the day, we can go back and find some of the old uh, uh, lives from, from maybe about, you know three years ago and I'd have on a baseball cap or I'd have on whatever. And it, it was me trying to find the right appearance. Now, I'm not saying I'm just going to show up before y'all, you know, in, in curlers and, and just look at, you know, all shabby. But I am saying that I was, I was so concerned about, you remember Karina? I was so concerned about my appearance before you all that it would sometimes stop me from doing the lies because of my appearance. Now, you know that I was putting way too much emphasis on how I look rather than placing the emphasis on the word that God was giving me. Right, Denise. Denise, I used to hide my frizzy hair. Rather than placing the emphasis that I need to show up and I need to bring the word. And I and so over the years, you all have helped me to evolve. There were days I showed up and my hair was all crazy and stuff. And I would make reference to it. And y'all would say, Sister Ann, you look fine. You look great. You know, and, and you all helped to, to build my confidence in the fact that I can just show up and be me. That I can just, when I get up in the morning, I can throw on my blouse. I can just do my little messy updo or whatever you want to call this hairstyle. Look, got my little ponytail stuff sticking out. But I'm just saying, you know, I, I thank God that he has healed me and brought me to the place where I, it, I, it's, it's not about appearance. If you are so, if you are so stuck on how I look, then you're going to miss the message. Can I say that again? That if you are just so enamored that you're taking out everything about me, my hair, my glasses, my blouse, then you're going to miss the message God has for you. So I have had to get out of the business of appearance management. Some of us right now, we have a stronghold on us that if we don't look a certain part, if we don't look a certain way, then we don't go certain places. We don't do certain things because it's all about appearance management. That is a strong stronghold y'all a stronghold of appearance and if this is you if the, if you if you really struggle to just let people see the authentic you let people see your hair messy if it's messy is messy uh, you know let people see that you don't have a a flat tummy you got you a little jelly roll and it's okay you understand what i'm saying just be you stop trying to be somebody else god did not anoint you to be anybody else but you The last stronghold is the stronghold of materialism. The stronghold that where we think that our value equals our possessions. Right? That what I have is what makes me important. Right? If I have a, a certain house or I drive a certain car, you know, that's it. You know, or or I, I have certain purses that got to have the name Gucci and Fucci and you understand uh, that, you know, that, that, that if I wear certain shoes and if I hang out with a certain crowd or if I have a certain type of jewelry or whatever, that's materialism, y'all. Don't y'all know we can't take that stuff to heaven with us? You know, now, it, 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 they, they say we ain't never see, uh, um, what is it, um, you know, a house or a car or none of that stuff backed up to a hearse. In fact, the clothes that you got on, you can, listen, you can wear all the finest clothes. You can dress a corpse in the nicest outfit. But at some point, that body turns to dust and that outfit don't mean nothing. It's, it's helping us under, you understand that we are in this world. But we're, listen, we go into a, we go into a place where you want to talk about real gold and you want to talk about, uh, you know, we're, we're going to that place, which trumps anything that we can have on earth. It, it so so don't place your your value. Don't attach your value to what you you have. Your value is not about the things you have, the things you acquire. That's a stronghold of materialism. All of that stuff is going to fade. So I pray that if the Holy Spirit reveal to you in anything that I shared that you have a stronghold 
of, of, of whatever that the Holy Spirit showed you that you will make a determination today by the power of the Holy Spirit to tear that thing down, to pull it down. Somebody say, pull it down. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to pray that during that time that we are just uh, opening our hearts to God, um, that as he reveals anything to us, that we will, we will release it, we will pull it down. Um, there can be, I didn't say it, Sister Lucy, but yes, absolutely a stronghold of regret. Because regret will cause you, who that's, that's such a good one. Thank you for saying that, Sister Lucy. Regret will cause you to live in the past and lament over stuff that you cannot change. Can you imagine? Even, listen, catch, capture this one. Even God don't change the past. As powerful as God is, when God makes changes, he applies the changes to our current and, and our future. Even God doesn't change the past. So for us to hold ourselves hostage, for us to be continue to beat up on ourselves about what we could have done, what we should have done, the mistakes that we made, the wrong choices, yeah, that is a stronghold. And that stronghold of uh, regret will cause us to miss what God has for us now. Why? Because we're so focused on what we didn't get. We're so focused on what we didn't do. We're so focused on what we didn't say. It is, Denise. It is very nasty. I know someone right now that they are living in regret and they are tormented. You understand? They are tormented. They, they, they can't get it together. They can't, like God is blessing them now and they they can't see the, the current blessing because they're wearing glasses of regret. They're, they're wearing glasses of, of wishing that they did some things different. That is a stronghold, Sister Lucy. And thank you for bringing that up. Because as you see, I can say a whole lot about that. I've had to release myself. Listen, particularly when you are a parent. Let me just talk about this for a second. I'm looking at the time. But just give me another second. Particularly when you're a parent. You know, there is no handbook on how to parent. Don't know when, you're, when your baby is born, don't nobody hand you a book and say, hey, here's parenting A to Z. So that means we're going to make some mistakes. And oh, by the way, from our parents, if they didn't give us some things that they may have been missing, that they didn't get from their parents and their parents didn't get from their parents, and we're talking about generationally stuff just coming on down the pipe, right? So, you know, when, when we're talking about generational curses and stuff, it's like you see that stuff coming and it may even enter your space. But that's why we talk about breaking generational curses. So what I'm saying, as a parent, we mess up. You, we, you know, it's, it's trial by fire. And so it, it's real easy to now that in hindsight we look back and wish we would have done some things different as we look at our children maybe struggling through some things that we may have caused that we may have done but we got to believe that the same God who bought us through the same God who had a way of getting our attention the same God who was able to set us on the right path is the same God of our children so if we're in regret about, I, I, I lived it for a very long time. Some of, the, some of the things that, you know, was put on me that I turned around and I put on my sons. Some of the ways that, that people made me feel, I turned around and I made them feel the same way. Some of the things I did with the right motive, I had the right reason I wanted to do it, but I did it the wrong way. And there was no manual. There was, there was nothing for me to check off and say, yes, yes, yes. I just had to do what I believed was right. And sometimes we do things that we believe is right, but it turns out to be wrong. But but we have to release ourselves, but we cannot live in regret. Amen. Elise, yes. We decree and we declare that it is broken in Jesus' name. Stronghold of regret. Once we know better, we do better. Don't hold yourself hostage for what you didn't know. If you didn't know, you didn't know. <laughs> right? Just that's, that's just real. If you didn't know, you didn't know. But now you know. Somebody said, now I know. Now I know the way God desires for me 
to conduct myself. Now I know the importance of releasing an individual. Now I know, you know, the importance of being repentant. Now I know that, you know, pride is, is it, God doesn't like pride. Now I know, you know, that, that my worth is not in things. Now I know that I am not rejected, that I am accepted. Now I know that the way that I win people to the Lord is not through being right and arguing and debating and trying to shove the Bible down their mouth. You know, as good as the Bible may taste, it's still nothing tastes good when it's being shoved down your mouth. I don't know about you, but even the best food that I like, I don't want it, you shoving it down my mouth. I want to be able to experience it. I want to taste it. And that's, the, that's what we want to do is present the word in a way that people want to experience it. And it's not always by thumping on the Bible is sometimes it's just living it out. All right, y'all. So I'm, I, I, I got to pray, but I pray that the Holy Spirit spoke to somebody this morning. Sister Lucy, I thank you. I thank you for bringing forward that stronghold of regret because that is a huge, 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 huge one for many of us, particularly those of us who are parents, particularly those of us who maybe are divorcees, divorcees you know, that, that, you know, a failed marriage. Uh, uh, listen, some of us, when we were younger, or maybe it could be last week, a month ago, maybe you had an abortion. Listen, this is real talk right here, y'all. You understand? We we are not, you. we can't change what we're not willing to confront. And so if you are in regret about some decision you made when you were a, a teenager or when you were lost or, or when you were in pain or when you were hurting, you have got to release that and break off that stronghold right now in the name of Jesus. Some of us have strongholds from things that were not necessarily taught to us, even though some things are taught, but a lot of things are caught. Taught, not caught. No, caught, not taught. Right. You understand that, that you were just in the atmosphere and, you know, you were in an atmosphere of alcoholism, of drugs, of, of abuse, of, uh, you understand? And so being in the atmosphere, you caught some things and what you caught is, is what you, you, in your mind, you thought this is the way it goes. This is the way love looks. This is the way this is, this is the way I've been. You caught that and it has become a stronghold in your mind. You think this is the way. Remember what we said? It, it, it's arrogance, um, rebellious stuff coming against what? The knowledge of God, the truth of God. Strongholds. So this morning we are breaking off strongholds. Come on, y'all with me? We're going to break off some strongholds. Now, listen, I always say to you all to click share. This is one of those I believe you need to share. There are people around us that are operating in strongholds. And I'm going to take it one step further and say Christians. You understand? As Christians, we cannot afford to be walking around with strongholds because we are called to win the loss. We are called to reach the loss. We are called to minister to the broken. We are called to minister to the hurting. And if we're hurting, if we're bound, if we're operating in strongholds, then we're not able to be the instruments, the vessels that God needs us to be. So when you click share, put it put it out there so that other people can go, woo, yeah, I've got a stronghold I've been operating in, but my, my eyes have been open today. Revelation has visited me, and I recognize that, and I realize that this is not what God has for me. And I have the power through Christ, the ability to pull it down, and not just today. Because here's the thing about strongholds. It has a strong hold, which means that after you recognize it today, tomorrow you can get up and, and, and be tempted to flow right back into that. And you got to go, oh, mm -mm -mm, no devil. Um, I broke that off. I released that right there. I Yeah, I, I, I got rid of that. I tore that down right. I pulled that down right there. So no, not today. You had to go mess with somebody else because that stronghold is broken. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, we come to you this morning thanking you for this word, for revelation knowledge. We thank you, God, that your timing is always perfect. 
I thank you, God, and I believe that as you laid this word on my heart this morning, that there is somebody, even if it's just one, that recognizes that there has been a stronghold, there has been a way uh, that they have been believing, there, there, there's there, been a pattern, there's been a behavior uh, that, 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 that we have been believing a certain thing for so long, and because of what we believe, it, 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 it affects how we interact with people. It affects how we see ourselves. It affects how we think you see us, God. And so today, today, by the power of Jesus Christ that's within us, the power of the Holy Spirit who lives in us, who dwells in us, by that power, we break off every stronghold that have been identified today. Now, listen, I need you to speak to your own stronghold. If you are willing to say, God, I break off the stronghold of rejection. I break off the stronghold of regret. I break off the stronghold of appearance, appearance management. I break off the stronghold, listen, of being a controller, a manipulator, wanting to have things go my way. I break off the stronghold of unforgiveness. That whatever it is that you have identified, and if you don't want to put it in the chat, don't put it in the chat, but you speak it out. Because you need to put the devil on notice this morning that God has given you revelation, that you have identified it, that yeah, you may have had me operating in this thing for a minute, but your time is up, devil. And today I am decreeing and I declaring that every stronghold in me is broken in the the mighty name of Jesus. I can't break off your strongholds. You got to break off your own. You got to open your mouth and you got to decree it and you got to declare it in Jesus name. So Father God, I just, I, I join my faith right now with every person that's under the sound of my voice, whether they're listening now or whether they're listening later, that every stronghold identified, every stronghold revealed in the name of Jesus is broken right now on this day 907 Thursday March 4th stronghold broken Father God where they have been lies received we we just thank you for your truth revealed come on where lies have been received the truth has been revealed we thank you for your truth God now we're going to put your truth on our situation, Father God. And we thank you for this word, God. Thank you that your word tells us our weapons of our warfare are not human, but are made powerful by you, God. That we can tear down strongholds. We tear down arguments and every arrogant obstacle. We tear down the lies that we were told, the lies that we believe, the lies that we receive. We tear anything down that's raised up against the knowledge of you, God. And we take every negative thought captive. And Father God, I do pray that as we break off strongholds off of our lives, that any strongholds that have passed through us to our children, to other family members, to our grandchildren, to our spouses, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that as you break it off of us, it releases its hold, its grip on those who have been affected as well. Ha! Thank you, Jesus. Who we thank you for that, God. Everything attached to me wins. <laughs> we thank you for this word, God. And we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. Y'all, who I know I kept y'all a little longer than usual, but Right, Sister Jeanette, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I am confident that this message was for somebody. I am confident that I am looking at some free people right now. I am confident that not only you have been set free, but those attached to you who have been dealing with the stronghold has been broken off of them as well. Amen. Let me go ahead one more time, and I'm putting the link uh, for our Faith Builders that's happening tonight, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So for those of you over there on the West Coast, you know, it's probably like 4.30 your time, so please don't miss it. Um, join us tonight. 
It take you 30 seconds to register if you want to be in the Zoom room. If you don't want to be in the Zoom room, that's fine too. Just join us on Facebook Live and yeah, we are gonna uh yes, Denise. Denise says to get up and dance in your new freedom. Hallelujah. I agree with you, Denise. Got some folk dancing right now. Amen, Emily. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Thank you all for continuing to just show up when I show up. Thank you for allowing me to share what God has placed on my heart. And more importantly, thank you for just allowing me to be me, to walk in, in what God, the way that God has created me to walk, for me to talk, for me to minister. And thank you for coming with open hearts. Uh, don't forget to click share. And I love each and every one of you. And listen, tomorrow we're going to get back together again. And we're going we're gonna to end the week strong. And some of you, uh, those of you that have already registered, I will see you all tonight. We're going to have a good old time. I love you all. Yes, Sister Christine. If nothing else, I've learned to be my true self. I love you all. Yes, Sister Karina. Have a great day, CP family. I love you all with all my heart. I promise. All right. I'll see y'all later. And I'll see some of you tomorrow. Have a blessed day.